Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Scott Fiaschetti from Geopath. I just want to welcome everyone. I'm here with Brian Schopper, as always, and uh, just want to say thank you to everyone for joining today's out-of-home office hours. Um, and um, if you've been joining for a while, you know the Thursday sessions are usually our foundational level sessions. And what that means is we really focus on the Insight Suite specifically, and then we use the Friday sessions to talk more about data and how to use the new Geopath Insights. Um, this, this coming Friday, which we'll talk about at the end of this webinar, is gonna be slightly different. Um, we're gonna have some guests from the Futures Council on, and we'll be talking about the newly released uh, best practices document. Um, but today, uh, we really want to spend a lot of time providing a really high-level overview of the Geopath Insights Suite. Um, you know, I know over the past months, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll focus on some of the changes and really just zero in on, on those things and how to use the new features and functionality. But today, we're going to take a step back, do a high-level overview so everybody's feeling comfortable with the Insight Suite as we know we're coming up on the, the launch of the, the new Geopath Insights in, in the coming days and uh, weeks. And we again, we want to make sure everybody's comfortable. So please um, ask any questions. Um, we're going to we'll answer any questions you have today, and we'll do our best if we don't have the answer to, to find it out for you and even follow up after the session. Um, and with that, you know, please do ask questions. And to do that, you would, ask, you would uh, use the, the question widget in the, in the Zoom media, uh, the, 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 Zoom, um, the Zoom media. Um, you know, uh, widget, <laughs> just to repeat myself, sorry about that. Um, anyhow, uh, just a friendly reminder. So while we are still in the beta phase, um, the impression data that you'll see in the Insight Suite is for non-commercial use. Um, and, um, you know, we do want you to go into the Insight Suite. We do want you to use it and explore. And we do want you to provide feedback because we are continually tweaking and improving the Insight Suite itself. So please feel free to reach out um, and provide, um, you know, hey, wouldn't it be great if you could do this? Or, hey, I was in the Insight Suite and this didn't work. So we'll show you where you can do that when, uh, when we're in the, uh, the Insight Suite providing the demonstration. But if you've never been in the Insight Suite, just one quick slide before we do jump into it. Uh, one of the key things we always talk about and one thing we're s most proud of are, you know, there's a lot of things we're really proud of, but one thing we're really excited about is the audience first approach and that's really with the main line and how this was developed we wanted to really focus on letting our members be able to talk about audience and how to home in much more granular detail than ever, ever before and one of the key things with that is just the fact that there are more than 8,000 audience uh, targets available in the new insight suites from demographics to psychographics to behavioral characteristics you'll win we'll we'll, we'll sh show you that and walk you through uh, an actual use case using some of those today so without further ado um, let's let's jump in let's take a look and like I said please take some time you know please answer questions we'll, we'll take the time we'll pause and try to answer them in real time as they come in so that they're as relevant as possible to the moment that you're having the question. Um, and with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Brian Shopper. He's gonna drive the walkthrough today, and then I'll come back near the end and, and do some more um, just kind of housekeeping stuff with everyone. Thanks. All right, thanks, all right. Scott. Um, yeah. We're all just getting our chairs all switched. Uh, let me switch over to the Insight Suite now, and here we go. Um, so, for those of you who might be new, if this is your first time looking at the Insight Suite, I just want to point out some things before we go through and do any examples. Um, we're also going to go back to the deck and talk about our example for today, but at a high level, this is where you land when you first log into the Insight Suite. This is the Explore module, uh, of which there are a few different mod modules that you can use. Um, and this Home button here gives you a bit of an overview of everything. So the workspace module, which we will take a look at today, is for planning and market averages and campaign analysis and things like that. And we'll, we'll use that in our example as well. We're going to use it in two different ways, actually. Um, the explore module is a very graphic approach to looking at all of the inventory in the system. Um, and you can do a lot of things with it. You can filter very interestingly, and uh, you can get down to exactly what you're looking for in a lot of different ways. Um, the Places module is a points of interest module, um, and we, I'll show you this, but we're not going to use this in our example today. 
Um, and uh, the reports module, it's coming soon. And this is post-campaign analysis and a more graphic approach to the data, just some charts and things like that. Um, so let's head back to the explore module. Okay, uh, a couple things as this comes up. There are a few things across the explore module that I want everybody to just keep an eye on as we go through our example today. Um, and we'll just let this catch up to us. Okay, so over here on this right hand side, these metrics here, uh, these always reflect what is on your screen at the current time, what's currently in your filter. Um, and if you can see right here, we have absolutely everything in our filter. So there's about 426,000 panels across the US that we audit. Um, and these are the metrics in a given week for all of the panels here. Um, you can see our total impressions here, about 60 billion, and our target impressions is the same number. Um, and as we add more audiences and as we get more specific with our audience um, characteristics, the target impressions becomes a subset of the total because we're looking at a much smaller percentage of the population. And that's also that percentage is reflected here in target comp percentage. Um, index also helps you get an understanding of how the boards in a certain market reach this particular audience that we're going to use. And you can also get a sense of TRPs here as well. So again, as we go through, just keep an eye on this. It's going to change as we filter and as we add different things. Okay, so across the top here, there are four different tabs that we can use. The define target tab has two different functions within it. Um, first, you have your audience and then you have your market. Let's just start with the market here. So here we have all of the DMAs in the country and these are ranked, I believe, by population. You can also choose by CBSA. Um, there's another way to choose what geography and uh, what area you're looking at and you can do that in filter inventory. Um, but at the DMA and CBSA level, you can do that here. And this kind of, this works twofold actually. Um, it, it deselects inventory outside of the boundaries of whatever you choose here. And it also sets the in-market population as that boundary. It sets the universe to whatever you set your market as. Right. Yeah, and one subtlety to that that I find really interesting is that because of where it is, so it's in the define target tab. So you're essentially saying, um, where do you want your audience to be from? Right, and just your point of your in market, you know. So you can, as you pick the geography and narrow in, you can. You're you're just saying like, well, I want this audience from this DMA. Yes, that's absolutely right. Um, so speaking of audience, uh, and Scott mentioned this earlier, we have about eight thousand different audiences within the Insights Suite, and they're broken down into a couple different things. Um, here in the Select Audience tool, you have your saved audiences. Um, and you can go through and custom name them and things like that just so they're easier for your own use. And the uh, audience car uh, variables are actually split up into three different, uh, three different categories. We have population, um, which is largely census-based and kind of in line with our legacy systems. Um, but there's some other things here as well. Um, so some uh, employment and commute things here, language in the home. Uh, basic demographics, and then in the household profiles, we have things like children in the home, um, you know, renting amounts and home value, things like that. Um, I'm gonna skip consumer profiles for just a second. Prism Premier is a uh, product from our partners at Claritas, and actually all of this uh, audience data comes from our partners at Claritas, um, but Prism Premier is their segmentation product. And every single household in the US is broken down into one of these 68 different categories. And these are kind of generic buckets that they, they fit people into, you know, they, they meet this kind of income range or they do these kind of activities. And this is just a good way to, to target a group if you're, if you have the kind of person you want to go for, but you're looking a little bit more broadly. Um, and while I'm here, actually, if you have a question about what any of these are, or if you have a question about anything as you're in the, in the, in the insight suite, you can go to the feedback tool here and you can search. So say I wanted to look at one of these, uh, maybe country squires. Let's just search country. And there's actually a little article here for each one of these different prism segments. And it gives you just a little bit of, you know, who these people are and some, some numbers here. Um, and again, there's one for each of those. And there's tons of articles here if you have any questions as well. You know, one question a lot of times when we're talking about uh, the audiences, and then we mentioned Claritas, um, 
just kind of where the data is coming from in terms. So, so Claritas is bringing in data from GFK MRI, from Scarborough, so uh, also as well as credit card purchase data. So they're, they're sourcing a lot of different data sources to come up with these profiles and to provide the um, prison, their prison premier segments as well. So there, there, there are multiple sources that they're pulling that data from. Yeah, and as a result of that, there are a ton of different audience profiles that we have access to. Um, so in this consumer profiles, the last category that I haven't talked about yet, uh, this is actually where a majority of those 8,000 that Scott mentioned are, uh, this is where you can find those. So they're broken down into a handful of different categories here. Um, and these are a lot about purchases and consumer spending, and there's even some psychographics in here, which I really like, a little bit more abstract. Um, environmentalism, tons of different things, travel. So this is a really fun place to go and just explore and see what there is because there's a lot. Every time I'm in here, I find new things. Um, so that wraps up the Define Target tab. So the Filter Inventory tab, I'm just going to collapse this. There are a handful of different ways that you can actually filter inventory. Um, so Media Type, it's broken down into a couple different things. These are sort of overarching, overarching filters. They kind of affect the rest of these. So you can choose Roadside or Play Space, which is relatively new for us. Um, you can also choose digital or non-digital, but you can just go through and look at all of them individually. You don't need to choose any of these. Um, so for freestanding, for example, if I wanted to look at posters, uh, I know I don't want digital posters, I want just static posters, you could find it there. And this updates as you filter for other things and as you set markets and things like that. So it's always reflective of where you're actually looking. Um, so that's media types. And Brian, you, just before you leave there, we just got a, a question. Can yeah. you can you go into media types and yep. just show um, some of the smaller formats? Yeah, there? sure. The, the there's some really interesting ones in the street furniture, for example. So let's look at uh, non-digital panels. So just take a look as I scroll through some of these. Bus shelters. Key there's a, key, yeah. Kiosks. So there's a lot of big and small format. Um, mm -hmm. and another part of that question was, um, you know, kind of above and below the ground. So that starts to speak to uh, how we measure, so transit mm -hmm. versus play space. So a lot of the uh, station inventory you will start, will you will find in place based inventory. Um, that is getting into the system more and more. So you'll start to see that expand as well as transit will also be a, a, a button up there as well once that is ready and live in the system. Um, and again, if you need access to the Insight Suite, please just email us at geekout at geopath.org. We'll put that email address up at the end of the session, but that's how we can, we can say, if you don't have access, we can set you up uh, with, um, with uh, access to our tools. So keep, we're gonna keep moving along. Um, media attributes, there's a couple different ways you could uh, filter based on this. So orientation, sort of the cardinal directions, and then these other ones as well, or by panel size, and this is in feet, I believe, but you can do uh, height and width. Um, of course, you can filter by operator, and this is another one that uh, filters itself as you go to different markets and as you apply different filters. Um, it always updates based on what you're actually looking at as well, just like the media types does. Um, and you can also search if you're in here. Um, you can search or you can scroll. Um, location, I mentioned earlier, you can look a couple different ways, not just DMA or CBSA, but in here you can go county and zip code as well. And I believe there might be some others coming for that as well. Yeah, um, and so this, the good. there's a question here about that. So Perfect. just nice segue. Um, wanting to know if we can break down on ins into the county. So, so yes, this is how you sure. start to filter is actually, you know, you can put, um, yeah, King County, Los Angeles County. Um, there will be the ability very soon to kind of stitch together, you know, to do custom um, uh, geographies where you can add multiple counties together, like in our old plan tool. So that is not available just yet, but it is on the horizon within the next week or so. You should see that in the tool. Um, so moving down a little bit more, this is, this is a super handy way to go through the Insight Suite. Say you have an email or an Excel file with just a handful of IDs, you can just paste those right in here and just you know look at exactly the ones you're trying to find. You can do both pan Geopath panel IDs or your own plant unit IDs if you're a vendor um, and just paste those in and it actually validates. Um, so if it recognizes it and it matches it to a unit, 
it'll validate it'll it for you right yeah. there. So it'll tell you if you, you know, some uh, you dropped a number somewhere and the, the, that geopad, that code isn't working, it, it, it'll alert you to that as well. So you don't think, oh, I copied in 100 and they're all there. You know, if, they're, if that's, one of them is wrong, it'll tell you, well, 99 were validated. Mm -hmm. um, thresholds is a filter you can use. Uh, these sliders say you wanted... Um, actually, a good example of this, uh, if it were maybe a campaign for like something alcoholic and you like a beverage or something and you had a 21 plus target, a lot of times it has to be like a 70% comp or something like that. So you can drag this slider and set, you know, I only want to look at units that have 70% or more target comp for this audience. So that, or you could do, you know, target impressions as well. So there's a couple things you can do with this. Um, and then down here, Scenarios, which we'll talk about when we go over to the workspace module. Um, so we won't talk about that right now, but saved inventory sets. As you go through and as you filter, you can actually save your work as an inventory set for later. So if you come back tomorrow or you log out or something like that, you can just call it right back up and it brings you right to where you need to be. Um, so that's a lot of the different ways to filter inventory. Keep moving over here. Layers and display options is largely map level and cosmetic. Um, but there are a lot of really cool things that you can do with this, um, including making custom maps out of all the different layers that you've worked on. So, um, so you have an inventory set that you saved and you have a place set from the places module. And you also have, you know, maybe the geography of a county you want to outline. You can add all those as filter or as layers and you can color code them and you can change their icons and you can reorder them on the map. So certain things stack on top of others. And then you can actually export that uh, that map with the actions tab, you can save the view for later or you can print it as a PDF and save it that way. Also in the layers and display options, um, in this display options tab here, there's some things you can check or uh, check on or off or change, just sort of cosmetic things about the map. Um, but there's a lot of different features in here that you can go through and sort of make it work for you how you want. Um, so let's take a look at the uh, places module now. We'll just a quick little walk through this. Again, this is our points of interest model and uh, module. And let me zoom out. Just how uh, in the other, it, it actually looks fairly similar to the Explore module at, at a first glance. Um, and all these little purple dots are actually places. Um, so to start a search in the places module, you go to find and define. And then here you can search a couple different things. Say you wanted to see coffee shops or you wanted to see all Starbucks. Let's do that, Starbucks. So this, uh, when you first do it, it shows you at a national level. And actually, it's kind of a handy thing. It shows you all of the things that, that even remotely match Starbucks in name. Um, and so when you do a search like this, you have all these other things. You know, I don't want this Starbucks drive through I want like actual Starbucks locations. So you can see number of places here. So if you click on the Starbucks the name itself, it'll then give you a list of all the locations that are in the system. And so you can filter it and you can do a couple different things here. Um, but you can also filter by a couple different geography tools. So say you wanted to look, you know, only in New York City, or you wanted to look within, you know, a three mile radius of this area, or just draw a polygon around this area, you can do all that as well. Um, and that's just other ways to sort of filter down your search. Um, you can go by place type. So um, I was actually doing an example of this, and I, I was looking up coffee, and there was, I think, bookstores that sell coffee. It was one of the place types. Um, so just a lot of interesting ways that you can actually filter. Um, and again, some just some different things here. Um, there's a lot of different ways to filter out once right. you are looking through here. And the brands I find uh, a lot of times helpful, too. So for example, whatever, if you're do doing a project for Marriott or something like that, you know, there's a lot of sub brands and that's a nice way to just kind of click and get the the actual brand that you're looking for. So uh, like Brian said, there's a number of different ways to to just kind of zero in and filter into your uh, place set of places that you want to create and, and save as a place set. And finally, uh, let's talk about the workspace module. Um, I'm going to talk just a little bit about this one. This one's kind of better to see an application. So when we get to our example, we'll really get into this. But uh, the way the, the workspace module uh, works is that you have to have a project first. So you make a project, and then within a project, you can have different scenarios. 
And there's a lot of different examples of ways that you can use both a project and a scenario. Uh, it kind of differs for everybody, but say for example, this caribou coffee campaign, let me do this project here. Let me just open this up so you can see. Um, the way that I was doing this one, it was a fall campaign and a winter campaign. Or for maybe our example today, it would be the Atlanta market and the Chicago market or something like that. So there's a lot of different ways that you can actually use scenarios within a project. Um, and we'll, we'll go through all this uh, as well. Um, and so within a single scenario, you can have a market plan and a, an inventory plan. And what a market plan does is it's a market average tool. It's very much in line with our O plan tool, uh, one of our legacy systems. And so that's just really good if you know, maybe from the agency side, you know, you want to be in a certain market and you want to have bulletins and you have a set number of impressions or TRPs or something that you want. You can go and see, okay, I need 30 bulletins in this market to reach my goal. And then you can go back into the Explore module and actually look for those. And that's exactly what we're going to do um, in our scenario today. And to sort of round that, round that out, once you do that, you can come back and make an inventory plan and actually look at the data and then look at the actual units that you've pulled and see how, they'll, how their planned performance in a given week or whatever it is lines up with what your goals are. So that'll kind of be the trajectory of our, of our example today. And so with that, we're actually gonna just hop back and talk about the, um, talk about the uh, scenario yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we felt like, you know, while it's great to give everybody a sense of what's in the tool, it's really more helpful to understand a workflow. And so we wanted to base that workflow around a, a use case that we've created. And we've mocked it up a little bit to, um, you know, have um, is a fictitious client, Mobile Gaming Arts. Um, and they have this product, Heroes and Legends, which is a, uh, uh, a, a battle royale game and if you have kids or maybe yourself uh, love the Fortnite series it's a, it's a game that that is similar to Fortnite um, newly launched in February and you know with any of these kind of these battle royale games you need if you play them you know you need a lot of people in them to make that more fun because again you need to have a large population playing it very quickly so they need to scale awareness and then they need to ultimately um, you know, use it, would, we would imagine a KPI of game downloads and, and registrations into the tool. So that's, we're setting up that scenario. And we're also going to say, like, this is a scenario that um, these clients, MGA, reached out to an agency. And how you would go through to, to select inventory and use the workspace, et cetera, to, to get to meet the needs of the, the actual project. Um, and so here's the, the use case details. So they want to reach 50 weekly TRPs in each market, and the client came to us and said, you know, um, you know, I want to be in these kind of large to mid-scale markets, so Atlanta, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco. And you'll see we're going to focus on Atlanta and Chicago today to give you a good sense of how do you do this type of uh, scenario in a couple markets. And obviously, it would be similar as you move through the markets. Um, but, um, you know, today, you know, we, as out of home, we tend to focus or can only really focus on, uh, at least using the geopath tools, right, um, demographic based targets. So males, ages 18 to 34, or, you know, different genders, household incomes, etc. We want to show you an example today of how you can do this, but now with, with different audiences are available to us. As Brian was saying earlier, you know, there's about 8,000 different audiences that you can use to really refine and try to get to the target that you're trying to reach. Much, much more granular than ever before. So that's what we want to illustrate in the tool. And um, again, given that they want big awareness really quickly, we're going to focus on large uh, format bulletins. So big bulletins that are static, so non-digital. Um, and so that's the scenario we're setting up. I want you to keep this in mind as we're working through through it. Um, 
just as a bit of an aside, um, before we jump back to the tool, this example, we, we, we wanted to replicate it. It's in our best practices document at a high level. So we wanted to show you how you can pull the uh, data for that. And if you haven't heard, um, this, the best practices document, we released it in uh, on September 16th. And what this is to do is that we worked with our Futures Council and it serves as a, as a, a touchstone for anyone playing, planning, buying, or selling out of home uh, as we start to move into these new, the release of the GeoPets New Insights. So we wanted to have a best practices, standards, and protocols document, that's the official name of it, uh, where everybody can go to, and no matter what stage you're doing, what side of the industry you're on, there's information for you to help guide you um, on uh, developing an RFP, responding to an RFP. Uh, even if you're kind of just working at a local market sales level, what, how do I talk about the insights? What if I get asked these questions? So we have even some frequently asked questions in, in the, one of the later sections. And you can download it in full, or you can download it in a section that's most relevant for you. And um, tomorrow's session, we're gonna, like I said, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, we're gonna, we're gonna talk in more detail about the, about the document and also some um, training modules that we're creating. So sorry for that little, um, that little uh, plug for the best practices document. Wanna go back to the use case. And now uh, Brian's gonna show you how we walk through and we actually get to pull this information within the, within the uh, Geopath Insight Suite. So uh, as, as Scott was mentioning, we're going to do a couple things, uh, two different markets, and we're, for the sake of this example, we could do a couple different targets, but we're going to focus mostly on this mobile gamers or just gamers in general. So um, let me just switch back over to the Insights Suite. And this is actually perfect. This is exactly where I wanted to start. We're in the workspace module. And so as I was talking about earlier, um, there's a couple different things that you can do within here, both the market plan and the inventory plan. Um, and we kind of want to approach this, this use case as if we were on the agency side. You know, we're not, not picking a specific vendor or, or anything like that. We just want to look at a market and we have an audience target and then just kind of see from there what happens. So uh, I want to walk through everybody, walk everybody through this workspace module, just start to finish how you'd use it. So I'm going to start with a new project. Um, we'll call it Heroes and Legends, just like the, um, the client. Legends, and we'll just call it Project 1. Okay. And you can give a description as well. You don't need to, um, but you can. And this is not your only chance to do that. Let me show you when you open it up. Um, so this is the inside of the project view. If you hit this little pencil icon, you can add a description here, or you can also add tags. Um, which are really helpful if you have a lot of different projects and you, you want to see all the ones that are, I don't know, automotive or, you know, QSRs or something like that. So you can add those here. Um, so as you're looking right here, you can see we don't have any scenarios in here just yet. Um, no scenarios in this project. So in order to run a plan, we need to have a scenario first. So let's do, uh, let's start with Atlanta. That was one of the two markets we wanted to, to do. Atlanta, uh, that's fine. I don't want to put a description. I'm just going to make a scenario. So again, just a quick recap. You make a project first, and then within that, you have different scenarios. And once you make a scenario, it launches you into this view. Um, there's three tabs here, market plan, inventory plan, and you can also add places from the places module in here as well. So you just have everything in one place. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the market plan is a market averages tool, so it's really good if you have an idea of what you want to look for and you know where you want to look for it. Um, and this, this just kind of helps guide you to know what kind of inventory and how much you need in order to reach your goals. So let's walk through this step by step. DMA market, so we're going to set a market. I believe you can also set a CBSA as the market. Um, so. DMA America, uh, I said for this one, we're doing Atlanta first, and we'll do Chicago in a little bit. So Atlanta, add selected, okay, audience. So it defaults to person zero plus. Um, I'm gonna add another audience. And I know the one I'm looking for, it's a consumer profile, it's not a demographic, it's not one of the prison premiere, I know it's in here somewhere. And let's just search for games, because I have a feeling there's quite a bit of different ones in here. So this handful here, 
these are the ones that we are really looking for. So um, use the internet or apps in the past 30 days on any device to play games or to download games. Let's do that one. That's nice and broad. Um, let's add selected. Okay. So you can see we've got our audience here. I'm going to get rid of person zero plus. I don't even want that one. Uh, and we're not going to add an operator. We just want to jump into this market and just take a look. Um, and for this one, if, uh, if we were to go back and look at the use case details itself, um, we wanted to do bulletins for this one. So we're going to do static bulletins. Um, and there's actually a pretty interesting function that you can do here. Say, for example, maybe you package up, you know, benches and transit shelters. You could actually go in and just for the sake of this example, you could select these two and then add them as a group. So uh, if that were something that you do a lot, it would show you, you know, of your group how many you would need. But you can also do things individually. Um, so I'm going to go back to freestanding, non-digital bulletins. I just want regular static bulletins. I'm going to add those. And you'll see it has it here. When you have a bunch, it'll add them all here, and you can you know, deselect them, add more. Um, back in our, uh, in our presentation there, the use case details, we wanted 50 weekly TRPs. So I'm going to put that in there for my own... Uh, well, actually, the tool uses that. So you can also set the plan length to a couple different things. But we're looking just one week. We wanted one, one week of 50 TRPs. So uh, I'm going to leave everything else, and I'm just going to hit Generate Plans. And so what this is going to do is it's going to show us in this market, in the Atlanta market, for this audience, those who have used the Internet or apps to download or play games in the past 30 days, it's going to show us exactly what we would need as an average to reach our TRP goal. Um, so let me just clarify, at least your TRP goal. So we said 50, and this is to get at least your 50. So let me hit the drop down here and take a look. OK, so required in total in market. So there are 123,000 bulletins in this market. So we need about 13. And this is averaged out. This is, a, this is an average tool. So we'd need about 13 bulletins in order to get at least our 50 TRPs. And if you click this operators dropdown, you can actually see who has uh, bulletins in the market that you're looking at. And it shows the numbers there. So I'm going to save this scenario up here in this right-hand corner. And I want to go back, and I'm just going to do one for Chicago as well. So we can kind of do them in tandem. Um, just. Uh as you're doing that, Brian, we got, got a quick question on um, when you're selecting audience in here, can you choose more than one audience to when you're setting up your, your yes. uh, marketplace? Yes, you can. Yeah. So when, when I was first doing it, I had the person zero plus and then I added another. You can do a handful of them yeah. um, and it'll, it'll list them out sort of how I clicked the drop down and it showed me I needed 13 units. It'll list each of them there for you. And you know, ultimately too, you can even add. You could do Chicago and Atlanta, and sure. do separate reports. But sometimes, like you're doing now, it's it's nice to maybe separate them. Sure. Yeah, just for the sake of organization. And again, this is why uh, this is so uh, so flexible. You can use a scenario to be really anything you want. Um, I'm going to do it as a market by market thing. So I'm going to make a new scenario here. I'm just going to do plus market plan, and we'll call this one Chicago. Chicago. And Create, an, uh, create scenario. And we're going to do the same thing, uh, same variables basically. Um, the only thing that's different here is it's just a different market. Um, so let's take a look. Oops. I hit something on my keyboard. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think I hit F5. Apologies on that. Um, we'll get ourselves back up. Okay, so we're gonna head back to the workspace. And let's see, where's my button here? Here's Legends, project number one. Okay. Okay, Chicago. So we did make the scenario, so I'm just going to jump back into that scenario itself. Okay, um, so you start with a market plan, just like before. Uh, we're going to add the market 
go Chicago right there, add selected. Um, and here, I'll show you in a second, actually. So um, I actually was working on this yesterday and I saved this audience that we're using because I had a feeling we'd be using it a few times. So um, this actually is an exact, uh, in look and feel is exactly the same as it is in the explore module, this audience selector here. Um, and so all the way to the left, you have your saved audiences. And here's the one I'm looking for, ways to use the internet. So I'm going to add selected. And right here, you can see these are two separate audiences. If you wanted to add more, you could. Um, but I'm just going to stick with just the one we want. Again, not going to pick operator. I'm just looking at an average at the market. Uh, and again, we'll be doing static bulletins, freestanding, non-digital bulletins. We're going to add as an individual. And same thing. 50 TRPs, and I'll leave everything else the same. And hit generate plans. Okay. So um, just as it's as it's generating the plan, um, I just want to uh, reiterate. I, I think I mentioned it earlier, but in case anybody missed it, you know, we right now in the tool we we have a roadside and and place space is in there. And within place space, it is a lot of your in venue measurement that is happening. So. Uh, things like uh, in-transit stations, et cetera. And the, um, uh, the mobile transit stuff, so like our buses, bu measuring buses, and anything that we know where it's going to be, that is coming in the tool. Um, it's not in there just yet, but will be soon, uh, as well as um, other things. So you may find uh, measurement like airports and, and everything that falls under place based. I, I can't recall if there, we do have any airports in there yet because as I said, you know, place space is being entered into the, the tool uh, as we speak. So you'll see more and more place based inventory in the tool. Um, but again, the transit inventory will be added in the coming, um, coming weeks. So hope that helps. I know there was a question on that. Um, okay, so this all generated actually. Um, so again, just like before, since we set our target as 50 TRPs, it shows you what you would need to at least reach that goal. Um, and I'm going to hit the drop down here and we can take a look. Oh, so it's actually 18 for this market, whereas Atlanta was uh, 13. Um, just kind of a little bit interesting about mm -hmm. you know the media weight of different markets and things like that. Um, okay, so I've got those numbers. I actually wrote them down so we can uh, keep that. So let's let's go into the explore module. Uh, I'm not going to leave without saving actually. So save scenario, always do that. Uh, and let's head back into the explore module and let's pick out some units. And uh, there's quite a few different ways that we can actually do that. Um, so let's let's see. All right, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, keep an eye on those metrics on the right-hand side because it's always interesting to see how they change as you go forward. Um, so let's start with Atlanta since that was the first uh, first project or first scenario I made. Let's do Atlanta. So we'll go working left to right to find target, and I'm going to hit assign market. And here we'll do Atlanta, and we're going to do it at the DMA level. We'll hit apply. And you'll notice as this happens, actually, let me just mention, well, you can still see it. All these little teal dots on the map are different pieces of inventory. And now that we've set a market, you can see here this 10,000 something bubble over Atlanta. And that's actually just, let me minimize this so we can get a better look. That's actually just the, um, the count of inventory in the DMA. So let's like click that and we'll zoom in. And we'll see this all visualized out here. So everything was teal when we were zoomed back at a certain level, but now we see we've got some different colors in here. I can see there's some purple down in the center. What does all this mean? You know, Let's take a look, this map right over here, this map key. So we've got orange bulletins, yellow posters, the street furniture is this green color, and then walls and murals, which might be a little hard to see, but it is in there um, down in this sort of downtown area. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. So we're gonna end up filtering this out, but let's go back here. We've got our market and let's set our audience. Um, again, there's two ways you could do this. Uh, here, I saved it for myself, so I have it right down here. 
But if you wanted to just go in and do a search, you can go to either consumer profiles or population. Um, and we'll go here and just search games. And then it was this one, um, any device player download past 30 days. We'll hit apply. So as, as I hit apply, keep an eye on these metrics over here because our target is now going to be a subset of the total. So we'll have a target other than this person's zero plus, which is what we've had as our total so far. Um, and also it will change, uh, it'll change actually all these metrics, but okay. So in this market, in a given week, we've got 2.6 billion total weekly impressions, but 1.1 billion come from those who say they've played a video game in the past 30 days on uh, any device or, or downloaded. So that's a, that's a pretty big amount of impressions and 41% comp. So, uh, that's always calculated by the target divided by the total, just so, so you know. Um, so we've still got a lot of inventory here. We've got 10,000 different pieces of inventory. And for example, today we wanted to look at just bulletins. So if I come over here to filter inventory, freestanding, and you can actually see if anybody remembers, this was a lot different looking when we were looking at the whole US. There were a lot more formats, these numbers were a lot larger, but now that we've filtered to just Atlanta, we're seeing different things. Um, so we in freestanding, non-digital bulletins, bulletins, we'll hit apply. And it's going to filter out everything that's not bulletin, so it'll just be these orange dots on the map in just a second. And you can actually see, if you look on the right-hand side, these numbers have changed even further. So now the total impressions that are showing over here, it's the total of all the bulletins in the market, which is 1.3 billion weekly impressions. And our target impressions are 550 million weekly impressions. So the people that, re that are this audience target, that's the amount of impressions in a given week that, that we're getting here. So, um, so this is still a lot of, this is still a lot. There are a couple different things that you could do from here. You could, um, if you know the area well, or maybe you don't, you could actually start looking at some, you know, maybe a specific zip code that you wanted to look, or if you had a, um, I don't know, maybe like a GameStop or a gaming store or something like that in the area that you wanted to sort of see this in proximity to, you could go to the places module and start looking that way. Um, but I want to look at just, I want to look at the units that are most efficient at reaching this audience that we've selected. Um, and in, in this sort by dropdown, there are a handful of different ways that you can actually sort and filter this inventory even further. Um, and it's set by default to target composition percentage, which, as I said a second ago, is we generally refer to this as the most efficient for reaching a certain audience. So I want to, oops, I was just thinking. Um, so I want to look at, I don't know, maybe the top, top 100, top 25. There's a lot of different things that we could do with this because there's so many different um, pieces, so many different bulletins in this market. Um, let's see, select. So you could do top 25, top 50, 100, or you could do this a totally different way, which I'll show in just a second. But let's look at the top 25 in the market. So it looks like a lot less, but when you actually zoom in, it's, it's just grouping them. So let's get a little bit closer. And there were some off to the east over there, but let's look at just these ones up here. Zoom out a little bit. So there's some groupings in here. Um, actually, oh, too far. I just want to make mention right here. You can actually see it. So these uh, icons have actually changed now. They were just dots before, but as you get in to a certain zoom level, you start to see directionality and number of facings. Um, so this one here is a north facing, and these are south facings. Um, but so we, we still have our 25, and if, if you remember from earlier when we were going through and we were looking at the workspace module, we know we only need about, and again, this is an average for the whole market, but we only need about 13 bulletins in this market to get our 50 TRPs. So let's see, let's, let's deselect some of these. So we've got 25, and there's a couple different ways we could do this. We could, we could look at them on the map, so if you hover over here, you can see where this is on the map. So that's, that's this one in here. Say we didn't want that one, we could just deselect it here. 
But uh, another way that you can look at this is if you open up this view down here in this bottom left hand corner, this arrow. And then uh, once this opens up, we can actually drag this higher so you can make it take up more of the screen. Drag this up. All right, not too bad. Okay, so see now we're actually looking um, at all those 25, but we're looking at it in sort of a grid view. And by default, this, this sorts by uh, target audience index by highest, um, highest to lowest. And um, so the average for these 25 is 136. And just a quick refresher on index. Um, generally, index, uh, an index of 100 is the average for the market. So anything above that is that percentage higher. So on average, these 25 units are 36% higher, 36% more efficient um, for reaching this audience target. Um, and some of these even higher. So like these top ones, uh, over 100% higher. So double. Um, but I only need about 13. There's a lot here. So maybe I'll do 15 just, just in case. Maybe, maybe in, you know, in reality, it'll be underneath a little bit under what our goals were. So let's deselect some of them. So I'm just gonna, I don't know, I'm just gonna deselect a handful of these. Um, just for the sake of example. Um, oh, sorry, there's a problem with my browser. It does this sometimes. I have to update the browser. Um, Let's see, 17, let's do two more. All right, there we go, 15. So we've got 15, and you could, you could have gotten these other ways too, but I just kind of did it this way. Um, so I'm gonna save these as an inventory set so then we can bring them back into our workspace module and look at them there. Um, so I'm gonna hit this, uh, actually before I save, there's a couple more things here, this customize columns button. There are a lot of different um, metrics here that are not by default laid out. And you can add any of these or all of these if you wanted to. Um, and you can just you know, click something and hit the over button and it'll add it. Um, and that'll also make it appear in the uh, report if you were to export this, which you can do by going save as, and then the drop down you can download as a CSV. So only what you have in these columns here will be exported, so just so you know that. Um, and I'm going to come to the Save As dropdown, and I'm going to save this as a new inventory set. And we can just call this Atlanta, Atlanta's <laughs> top 15 gamers. Um, call this Heroes and Legends, just so I don't forget. OK, and you can really name this anything you want. This is just for your own sake, so you can find it later. Save and keep exploring. Okay, saved. All right. I'm gonna actually refresh my browser because these stars are being strange. So, um, so we've done Atlanta, and we're gonna do exactly what we just did for Chicago. Um, and just as a little refresher, uh, I wrote down we needed a, on average 18 bulletins in Chicago to get at least that 50 TRP goal. So. Um, so once this loads up, we'll go and we'll just do the same thing we just did, but in Chicago. Okay. So I can actually see on the bottom here. Um, and if, if you're ever wondering about what you have currently filtered or anything like that, these little pills here along the bottom always tell you exactly what you've got here. So your audience, your market, and the type. Um, so let's go define target and we'll switch our market. Switch it to Chicago. And we'll give that a second. It's actually gonna clear out all this because we're still looking at Atlanta, but let me zoom out so we can get over to the Chicago market. Okay, let's see how many, I think it's still, yeah, it's probably still filtered for bulletins. Let me just check. Oh, it is, yeah. I should listen to my own advice. It's down here. Um, so let's just zoom into this market and take a look. And just to reiterate, we've got our audience target, the those who downloaded games or played them the last 30 days, market Chicago, non-digital bulletins. And let's just do exactly what we just did. So I'm just going to open up this side view. And you can always collapse this as well if you want this collapsed. Um, and we're going to look at the uh, top 
We'll do top 25 again. Let's see. Get a little bit closer. My browser needs to be cleared. But, so we've got 25 selected. Um, I don't really care where they are for this example. I'm just kind of looking at the numbers. So I'm gonna hide that and I'm gonna look at uh, this view down here again. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna do exactly what I did. I'll just deselect a handful of them and yeah, we can just save it from there. So um, target audience index, the average for these 25 is 115. So actually uh, in a way, I guess less of a gamer market in one way or another. Um, so I needed about 18, so maybe I'll deselect five of these so we have a set of 20 just in case, you know, the TRPs are actually under or something. So we'll deselect some of these. And one of these. And, you know, I'm, and Brian admittedly is kind of just trying to show the example. So if you, yeah. were, if you were doing this for an actual plan, you obviously would probably look at geography and also maybe there, there'd be multiple metrics you might be looking at. I want some that have a big reach. I want some that are have a lot of impressions or a high target index. So obviously you could use these columns to filter that way and, and kind of select a plan that's most appropriate for you. But also for, for efficiency and time, we're just kind of mm -hmm. use it clicking a few on and off for everyone to, to show how it works. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna save this as another inventory set, just like I did the other one. Um, and for the sake of the example today, we're just, we're done with the Explore module now. Um, now that we have our inventory sets, I'm gonna go back to the Workspace module and actually see how these work out um, in an inventory plan. So again, I'm up here, in the workspace module, Heroes and Legends, this is my project down here. Okay, so let's do Atlanta first again. So we'll just pop back into that scenario that we already made. And if you remember, we went and we did a market plan first just to sort of get an idea of the averages and the numbers. Um, but we're going to do an inventory plan this time. So this middle one here. Um, so we're going to set our audience first. We'll just go across and then down. So I'm going to go uh, create new audience. So uh, again, this actually just mirrors the same audience selector as the uh, explore module and it's a market plan. Um, with an inventory plan, you need to have your audience saved in order to add it to an inventory plan. So for example, let me just show you. So, oops. Sorry about that. So games, uh, here, any device. So Oops, was it that one? Yeah, so I've selected that one and then all you have to do is hit save audience and it'll put it in your saved audiences. Um, but I already saved this one audience because um, I knew I'd be using it a lot. So I'm just gonna sit, click that one, hit apply. Okay, so we've got our audience there. I'm gonna select a market. If you do this at DMA or CBSA level, uh, again, we're doing Atlanta and I'm gonna leave it as DMA. Okay, and then these delivery goals, these are really just for your own um, for your own notes and for sort of keeping score against what you have. Um, so my goals, say I had an impression goal that I had, or in this example, we have our 50 TRP goal, um, and these are weekly. Um, and so as we populate this plan, we'll see that the planned metrics, how they stack up with our, with our goals for the plan here. Um, and so I'm gonna hit add inventory. And there's three different ways that you can do this. You can either paste in some Geopath panel IDs or plant unit IDs, or you can load a saved inventory set like I did, or like I made earlier. I'll search HL, Heroes and Legends. Uh, here we go, Atlanta, top 15. And we're gonna add selected. Um, so again, for this one, when I was doing the market plan, it's on average, I would need about 13 bulletins to get our, uh, to get our TRP goal. So let's see, we've got 15, so we might be a little bit over. Um, let's see how this goes. So in order to actually get the plan goals to generate, you just have to hit save scenario and it will generate with the plan goals. Um, so we're actually uh, over, almost double. So uh, again, the market plan tool is an average tool. Um, and so, you know, certain, certain pieces of inventory, you know, 
have greater TRP pull and things like that. So, you know, in this case here, you could actually just go through and, you know, based on my math, I guess deselect about half of them, um, at least to start. And you could, you know, you can whittle it down and just try to get as close to your 50 TRP goal right. as you need. And that makes sense, right? Because you picked the top 25. Yeah. So, so we weren't focusing on geography. We were just focusing on... It's purely you know, metrics. Purely yeah. just what are the top 25 for comp index. So it, it stands to reason that, that, that those would be the, you know, would give you a higher TRP count. So to some extent. Um, so yeah. So that does make sense. And I know we're starting to get to the top, top of the hour. So yeah, we're almost wrapped up. We're almost done, yeah. so apologies. Um, and so, so that's the Atlanta market, and you can go in here and you know, do some further work with this, but that's how you would fill out an inventory plan. And I'm just going to go back to the project, and I'll do the same thing for our Chicago scenario, and we will see how that stacks up too. So we're just going to click on the name, and it will launch us into it. Go inventory plan, and same thing. So it, it has your, it'll do a drop down of your saved audiences. So I knew that that one is at the bottom. Select market, Chicago, add selected, add custom goals. I know, same thing, 50 TRPs. And we're gonna add inventory just like we did a second ago from our saved inventory sets. And this one's Heroes and Legends. Here we go, Chicago. And again, for this one, uh, the market plan thought about 18 bulletins. I picked 20 just, just in case to have a little bit more. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, um, and I'm going to, I'm just gonna hit calculate on the reach down here so I can get a sense of it. And it would also do that if you, once you hit save scenario, it calculates that for you, but. All right, I'm gonna hit save scenario and let's take a look how this, uh, how these 20 stack up against this 50. Oh, interesting. Actually under. So kind of just gives you a sense of, you know, the market plan tool is, it's an average tool. So in certain markets, you might need more than the average or what you thought you might need. And for this, you could just go back into the explore module, find some other ones, and you can just add them to an existing inventory set and just bring them right in here. Um, cool. Yeah, great. Yeah, and um, you know, uh, sorry, I'll get closer to the mic, but you know, if there was an example where, you know, Brian, you mentioned earlier with GameStops, you would probably use that third tab. Sure. You might have a, a set of GameStops in the Chicago, you know, Chicago Land DMA. And you, you can load them in here. So then you could have a complete project together, a complete scenario. So your market plan into your inventory plan and also your places there as well. So cool. Um, and uh, just to jump in, I want to do some, some housekeeping. Um, and I want to just, as we're, as we're winding up this, this session, um, I mentioned the, the best practices document. But I also want to uh, talk about tomorrow's session really quickly. So again, I, I mentioned that we're going to have a couple of special guests. Uh, so Gina Stratford from Yesco Outdoor, Mike Bongiovanni from Horizon Media, and Matthew Noel from EMC Outdoor. They're all members of the Futures Council, and they were key in helping us get together, the, uh, as well as the entire council, uh, as getting together the, the best practices document. So we're going to do a walkthrough of that, and just talk about it, and really be there to answer any questions the industry has on kind of this transition as we start to move into the uh, new Geopath um, Insights, which is targeted to launch on uh, next week, on October 1st. Um, that said, you know, we will still be supporting our old tools through the end of the year, so it's not just going to be a hard switch. So we're going to give the industry time to get comfortable with the, the new metrics. And those metrics, um, that uh, the, once the Insight Suite does release on October 1st, uh, it's for planning in uh, January 2020. So any campaigns that are launching in January 2020, you'd use the the tools from the um, the, the data from the Insight Suite uh, to to with those. But anything from October through December, you would be using the um, the current measures that are out there in our legacy tools. And we could talk more about that tomorrow as well on the session. 
And uh, also another helpful webinar, in case you missed it, is the How Have Geopath Impressions Have Evolved? Uh, again, we know things are changing and people might have questions. So Dylan Maven and myself did a, a webinar a couple of months ago, but I think it's still really relevant and valuable. It, uh, you can click, there's the, the link there, but you can also find it on our YouTube channel as well. Um, and just on our website, this is where you can go to find all of our past webinars. So the six mo re most recent ones are always listed by the thumbnails, but then there's a, uh, if you read the text above, uh, you know, it says click here to see our entire library. So you can go there and, and find any other webinars that are available to us. And again, the best practices document, this is actually a screenshot of our, the homepage of our website. So if you land on the homepage and just scroll down a little bit, you'll be able to download that document as well. So again, just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for staying on so long. We appreciate all the attendance. Please feel free to ask us questions. Um, apologies if we didn't get to everybody's questions as, um, you know, as quickly as we could have. Or, you know, um, you know, if you do think of a question after the session, please, you know, just reach out to us at geekout at geopath.org. And or I know there was a question early on, how do I, get, how do I gain access to the Insight Suite? Again, just reach out to us here, geekout at geopath.org, and we can set you up with uh, login credentials. Uh, again, just want to say thank you to everybody, and hopefully we'll see you all again tomorrow on tomorrow's session. Thanks a lot, and have a good day.